everyone, it's Rachel here with Design Therapy. I'm so glad you clicked on today's video. What I'm going to be showing you in today's video is I'm going to be showing you different ways that you can decorate your kitchen for fall. Now, this may be everyday items that are out on your kitchen counter and you are trying to come up with ways that you can decorate and make it look styled and professional. I will give you some ideas with that. I'll show you three different ways that you can do it with most likely items that you have in your home already. So it's not like you have to go out and buy any. This is just to help you come up with some ideas to maybe refresh your kitchen counter, refresh, refresh your kitchen overall, um, or you just may be stuck on what you want to do for styling in your kitchen. So I hope this inspires you. It doesn't necessarily have to be for fall, um, but it's just that time of year. So a lot of my decorations will be fall. Um, but come along, decorate with me, and I'll show you different tips and tricks along the way. Um, but I hope you enjoy this video. Let's go design. Here's what our kitchen looks like after I take away all the decorations I usually have sitting out. We have done a lot of work to this kitchen and I have ideas to do even more, but one step at a time. I love the transformation from when we bought this house. This is our first house and it was built in the late 1970s. The owners before did some small updates here and there, but the kitchen is pretty original to its time. I'm planning on making a vid video for each room in our house that we have done and there I will be showing the before and afters. Also describing everything we did and how we did it. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Coming here soon. For this video, here is just an overview of how it currently looks. We have this very unique bay window in our kitchen. At first, I didn't care for it, but I'm starting to really enjoy it and like finding new ways to decorate it each season. It's a great spot to hold real plants, but I usually prefer fake ones. I have a gold frame that I purchased years ago from Goodwill. And Goodwill is one of my favorite places to find cheap gold frames. You do have to look though, but once you do find one, it's hard to beat. I make sure the frame is a rustic gold and not too much of that yellow gold. That way it looks more authentic and make sure it's in a good condition, of course. I then just will print out a picture at Walgreens or CVS to replace it, and that's about it. Next, I'll be adding an amber glass vase from Hobby Lobby and a collection of dried florals for height. Then I'll add a fall candle on the top shelf as well. I really enjoy putting candles up on the top shelf next to the glass because when the sun is out, it melts the candle just a little bit and makes the whole kitchen smell amazing. I have a tray basket that I will be using pieces from a fall bowl filler I purchased last year. If you previously watched two of my fall videos, you will know that I have used these all throughout my house this fall. Instead of using them all in one place, I'll scatter them throughout my home. When it's time to refresh any area of your home, you want to start fresh. I like to first clear off all items from the area that I'm decorating, and then I will start. I'm starting with a frame that I repurposed, placing it as a backdrop for the first countertop example. Using a bigger frame that leads all the way to the bottom of the upper cabinets helps to draw the eye all the way up. With my counter being mainly white and the remainder of the kitchen being neutral, I need to add warmth and a variety of textures into my styling to ensure it feels lived in and has enough contrast. Using a wood serving tray or cutting board leaned up against the wall is a good way to add some warmth. The gold on the tray also helps to bounce off the gold frame. This tray was an old hearth and hand find at Target. I'll link a similar one below. I'll then add in my cookie jar and write white utensil holder. I love how the utensil holder has some texture and it adds a little more dimension to the look. With the utensils, I collect wood ones to add even more wood tones. When picking out wood utensils, I like to stay within the same wood tones overall, but just vary in a bit to make sure they all collectively work well together. I'll add in a few white and wood utensils from Amazon as well. Finally, I'll add a few more decorative pieces with the kitchen towel and dried floors, and there we have it. And 
option two. I'm keeping the wood tray leaned against the wall and we'll also leave the white cookie jar in its place. In this style, I will be bringing in books and a few more items to provide a sense of warmth. I love using books all over my home to add height and to use as a cheap decorative piece in any room of the home. For this styling piece, I'm leaning one cookbook and two other books against each other to add contrast and help break up all the white that's going on in the kitchen. Then I will use a vase from Hobby Lobby and fill it in with my wood kitchen utensils. The wood utensils will play off nicely with the wood tray in the corner. When styling, you want to use a variety of materials, but you want to make sure to replicate a few of the same materials to make it look intentional. I like to also use vases or planners to hold my utensils, which is another budget-friendly tip. To complete the look, I'll break off a few more of those dried flowers from a bundle and lay them next to the book. And there you have it. Option three, I'm still keeping the wood tray leaned up against the wall for warmth. In each option, I use it because I think it really brings everything together. I cut and dried some hydrangeas I had out front and placed them in this white glass pitcher for a bit of greenery. Next, I'll place the tray that is shaped as a pumpkin with my DIY little terracotta look-alike light up pumpkin. And then with an everyday item within reach for easy cooking, and some wood salt and pepper shakers. And that's about it for option three. I'm in love with these sconces on both sides of my oven hood. It is one of my favorite pieces we've added to our kitchen. They play off the gold handles and add an extra touch of light. I will link a similar pair below. Next to the oven, I'll add a wood cake stand that I usually have filled with some sweets, but as you can tell, my sweet tooth was working overtime this week. Then I'll add a piece of dried florals I tore off from the bundle and keep it pretty simple. Over on the opposite side of the kitchen is where we have our coffee station. Adding a white cake stand and utilizing the space to add more function into our kitchen. When cooking, I'll just be placing a container with utensils in it as well. Next, I'll add this green textured mug I picked up this fall from TJ and some more dried florals. As you can see, I made sure to add symmetry and repetition throughout our kitchen styling. And there you have it. wraps up the video thank you guys so much for watching and I really hope this did help you and it answered some of your questions on how to decorate a countertop overall I feel like kitchens are one of the hardest to decorate we're obviously in there it's the heart of home we're in there all the time um, but I feel like it can be really hard to know how to decorate it so I hope this gives you some inspiration gives you some ideas I would love to hear if you have any more ideas we can all brainstorm together you can comment below um, and we can all just um, how to style kitchens together. So thank you so much for watching from the bottom of my heart. I really appreciate it. If you want to like, subscribe so you don't miss any videos, that would really help my channel. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care now. Bye.